there's something about having a knock on my door at any time of day that creeps me out in today's day and age. What could be so important as to warn a visit? Could they have not called or texted? Out of anxiety and confusion, my base instinct is to hide the fact that I'm home and attempt to check who's there without revealing my presence. Even when it's just a neighbor or a solicitor, that's my typical response. Even with the DoorDash, I wait for them to drop off the food and leave before I retrieve it. That is why, at 3am, I would never answer my door. It's said that nothing good happens after 2am. One night, like many others, I was up late smoking weed and playing games, guzzling down caffeine to stay alert. But unlike other nights, one of my worst fears was realized. A knock at the door. As the knock sounds, I immediately flinch. Who could that be this late while I'm home alone? I sat there, not even breathing, unsure if what I heard was real. Breathlessly, I waited and waited, hoping it was just imagination. After all, at 3am, who would come to my door of all doors? Then, the repetition sounds again. The knock, echoing through my house, rose into my computer chair. I debate my odds of them just leaving, assuming I'm asleep. It is late, after all. Doing the quick mental math I had to know. They'd know I'm home and awake, having all of the lights in my house on. Between that and pure curiosity driving me, I knew at the very least I had to see who was knocking upon my door. As cautiously as I could creep towards the front door, positioning my body against the wall to avoid being spotted from the window, again, the knocks ring out almost frantically, desperate in a way. Slowly I make my way to the people, breathing shakily. The only noise besides the knocking is my heart banging against my chest, blood coursing through me so intensely, I can hear my heartbeat throbbing into my own ears. Through the people, even more worrisome and curious sight. There is no immediate presence, yet an immediate knocking forces me back out of pure instinct. At this point, my heart is screaming in my ears, the drumbeat begging me into flight, into fight or flight mode. Nothing but adrenaline pushing me into my next actions thoughtlessly. Forcing myself, I undo the deadbolt on the door and fling it open, full of fear, only wanting this nightmare to be over. As the door swings ajar, my fear is reducing a small figure of a child. Yet the fear doubles even more, realizing the intense knocks that rang through my house in the late hours of the night were from a mere child. But yet, why would a child be at my door in the midnight hours? I stood there for several moments thoughtless, genuinely bewildered the situation I found myself in. As I stood there, mouth and mind agape, I realized the child wasn't even facing my door. My voice caught in my throat. I could barely force out a whisper. My voice cracked and wavered, fear dictating my very being, and then it struck me. This is a child, scared and helpless, banging upon my door in the middle of the night. It's just something within the human heart that overrides fear when realizing another is in need. Doubly so when it's a child. Hello? Is everything okay? I beckon out to this mysterious child to no avail. Faced with just the silhouette of the back of the child, I repeat myself. Hello? Is everything alright? Silence. Long, terrifying silence. I want to open the screen door and reach out to the child, but something inside of me just won't. Again, confidence. I, I bellow. Hello, please. If, if you need help, I can help you, but... If not, I don't appreciate you bothering me this late. The child finally smoke, spoke in a hoarse and drawn-out voice, as if the child desperately needed water. Perhaps it was just sounding out its first words, the child spoke almost questioningly. I want... Sending it dull wood when talking to a child, I softened my voice and asked, What do you want? Almost as if the child were mimicking me in that hoarse, terrible voice he repeated. You want. You want. Growing less fearful and more concerned for the child in this situation entirely, I persist. Yes? M what is it? What do you want? Is 
it's everything okay? And still, without turning, the child just echoes in his terrible, worn-out voice. Want. The fear starts creeping up my spine once more like a cold chill ascending from the floor and growing colder and colder into my numbness of the core. I stutter out. Please just tell me what you need. Are you all alone? And coldly, the child once again echoed my own words back at me. Are you alone? Feeling as if it was taunting me or mimicking me, but feeling equally guilty for that thought as if it's just a scared child. I reply, yes, it's just me. I can call someone if you need. Are your parents around? You shouldn't be off on your own at this hour. And then coarsely, the child hissed out. We are not alone. My only thought is panic and confusion. My eyes leave the child and dart around surroundings in panic. I start to tell the child I don't see anyone else before everything is just halted by the realization that we aren't alone. Hidden in the shadows of the night stood a tall, dark figure in the middle of the lawn. Featureless, just a lump of shadows in the form of a man, but in the darkness I couldn't make any details of the figure at all. I begin to crack open the screen door just slightly so I might address the shadowy figure. But as the door opens, the child spins on its heels, swiftly startling me back into the safety of my own doorway. Then within seconds, all of the fear felt before was back, and more pungent than before. Quickly, with my fear growing ever more, I studied the mysterious child's face. Pale and smooth as if it was sculpted out of porcelain. All of its features perfectly in place, and smooth in such a way where it was so natural it couldn't be anything but natural. Something about the perfection of the child's poreless skin just didn't seem real. That's when I saw it. The eyes. My entire life. All of the joy. All of the fear. All of the sadness I'll ever live could not hide, erase, or dull the memory of sheer dread when I looked into that child's eyes. If you've ever stared into the dark, to a starless night, to the dark water's abyss, and felt nothing but emptiness staring back at you, devouring the light, pulling everything in, then you might understand the feeling of terror I felt as I saw nothing. The eyes weren't there, replaced by sheer darkness, shadow, fear itself. Not just dark eyes with no white, but an all-consuming darkness which light never could escape. Something that could only be compared to the elder horror of a black hole pulling in everything, devouring all. Time felt as if I stood still as I gazed into the abyss, unable to think to react, as if its stare had turned me into stone. Yet the only thing I could, I screamed. Not the scream of a full-grown man, but the scream of a desperate soul fearing its final fate as I fell back towards the floor, kicking and screaming desperately to get back, to get away, anything to avoid the deep, dark gaze of this mysterious child. I'm not proud of it, but in my chaotic retreat I managed to fearfully flail around in just such a way I kicked the door shut. Without its eyes upon me, I was able to think again. Door. Lock. Fuck. The only thoughts I fumbled as I fumbled towards the door. As I heard the deadbolt lock click shut, the knocking started back up again. I heard the mis mystery, and I heard the mystery child beckon. I want. Terrified, I backed away from the door. Right then, so when I heard a noise that terrified me even more than the knocks that shook my door in its frame. Sharper. Fragile knocks of a hand on glass upon my window spun around with dizzying speed towards the knock. If a child could shake the door, could easily bust the window. And then, again, from another window, another knock boomed in repetition, and then another, making its way from window to window to window, and back to the door surrounding me. And then, all at once, from all the windows, the, the child's voice rang out in a terrible symphony, a cruel cacophony. 
A cruel cacophony. From every door and window rang out a We want 